Okay, so if you haven't played this game yet, what the heck are you doing? But for those of you who have no idea what's going on, let me quickly summarize. So, as Link and Zelda explore underneath Hyrule Castle, they stumble upon an ancient evil, the Demon King Ganondorf. A little arm-burning, sword-destroying later, we awaken in the sky with a vengeance to take down Ganondorf. You're ugly, you're disgusting, I'm gonna kill you, give me $200. Now normally you use all the amazing weapons and bows in the game, fusing items to them to increase their power and efficiency, taking down each dungeon and eventually defeating the Demon King. The problem is, as you play, weapons and shields decay and eventually break, meaning you have to pick up new weapons to replace them. But what would happen if 1. We couldn't use any of those amazing weapons and 2. Had access to just one single shield? Is it even possible to get off the Great Sky Island? And if we did, could we beat Ganondorf's army, all the temple bosses and the Demon King himself with just one shield? Well, let's find out. As we awaken in the sky, we are immediately presented with a huge problem, vines. We need to cut through these vines to get out of this room. I tried glitching out of the room, but that was unfruitful, and I think potentially using a save glitch, you could possibly drop some fire fruit here and pick it up in a new save, burning down the vines. Unfortunately, I couldn't get that to work, so for the only time in the run, I grabbed the master sword and charged a spin attack, breaking through the two vines in just one spin. So technically we've failed. Uh. Or have we? Now if you pay close attention to the Master Sword before we do the spin attack, you'll notice in the inventory screen it has a little sparkle next to it. This means that the item has not been used and has not lost a single point of durability yet. And if we look after destroying the vines, we see that it still hasn't lost any durability, meaning we technically haven't used it. But progressing forward from here and hitting this rock, it does lose durability, so I'm going to count this as still technically not using the Master Sword. But if anyone has any ideas of how to get through these vines without using the Decayed Master Sword, I'm all ears. Let's say we allow that though, how much further could we really get? While making it out of the Room of Awakening, we jump down to the Great Sky Island below. Now to escape the Great Sky Island, we need to do a few things. Firstly, make it to the Temple of Time. Second, beat every shrine on the island and claim all of our abilities all without using a single sword, bow, or shield. But why don't I pick up a shield? Surely it'd be useful, and you would be right. But since in this game all items have limited durability, even if I was to make it off the island, my shield wouldn't have enough durability to make it all the way to Ganondorf. But out in the world is a shield. A shield that has enough durability to get me through every battle I need it to. But for now, I head to the temple with ease and speak to Raru to unlock all the shrines. Heading over to the first shrine is no problem, and thankfully this shrine doesn't require anything but a little bit of old-fashioned problem solving, allowing me to travel over this gap and claim our first blessing, as well as unlocking the Ultra Hand ability for use outside of the shrine. Nice. This helps me craft a little boat and head over to shrine number two. Heading inside the shrine, we are immediately presented with a wall, in the literal sense and proverbial sense as well, since this wall is blocking my way. Usually you are meant to fuse this rock to this sword and break through the wall, but obviously Obviously, I can't do that, so I decided to leave for the time being and come back once I had the Ascend ability. As I made my way towards the next shrine, I found another problem. I have no way of activating Zonai devices, at least for now, meaning I couldn't activate this fan to get across this water. With my Giganto brain though, I came up with a solution to just use the Ultra Hand and jump from log to log. But immediately in the cave, I reached a dead end, and I couldn't activate the fan to push this minecart up the track. I tried walking across cross it and although it kind of worked, I ended up finding an alternate route using these hovering Zonai blocks. Little did I know, these blocks would be a major saving grace. Lifting each block gradually higher, I jump from one to another gaining infinite height and making my way over to the next shrine without even breaking a sweat. Making it into the shrine, I got the ascend ability and all seemed well until I was stopped by ropes. Yeah, I needed to break them somehow so that the platform would fall down and I could ascend through it. Thankfully, I tricked this Zonai enemy into shooting the ropes for me, allowing me to make it to the end of the shrine. With the ascend ability, I headed on back to the fuse shrine and got to work. My initial plan was to ascend through the rock attached to the wall, but then realized if I just piled these stones on top of each other, I could just climb over. Huh. Maybe I didn't need a scent. Just over the wall I encountered my next problem, a locked door. And the only key being way up on this wall. 
You're meant to shoot a fused fire arrow at the wood here and burn it, but without access to the bow and arrow, and not able to throw items, I had no idea how I was going to get this key. But we just need to get to the chest, so if I can somehow ultra hand it, or ascend onto that platform. <gasps> ascend onto that platform! If I get just the right angle. Oh, 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 oh my god, oh my god, things are happening, things are happening, let's freaking go, okay, and with the door unlocked, I skipped over the next enemy using this rock and claimed my next blessing, back at the temple of time, we get the recall ability and failed to open this door, pretend like you're pushing out a shit link, okay, we can't get the shit out, that's all right, um, we just need to eat more, it'll put push the food down, and then we'll be able to like, you know, brute force our way through. And by that I mean get a heart container. From here I head back to where it all began and enter the final shrine on the Sky Island, completing it without a single problem. Now I could push open that door and get off this damn island. Jumping from the heavens down to Hyrule Field feels so liberating, we've got the whole world to explore. So. Now that we're in Hyrule, our first order of business should probably be to obtain our shield. And to do that, I'll need to head over to Hyrule Castle. On our way to the castle, I stop past Lookout Landing as I might as well complete the quest for the paraglider which will make exploration a little bit easier. <sighs> ma, 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 mia, pura, oh my... You're not a ghost, are you? Oh my god. I just recognized the hey. voice actor. It's Looks Sakura from freaking Naruto. Oh my god! Ew! 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 I take it back. I take everything back. We head up the castle to complete a quest and obtain the paraglider just in time to be shot miles into the air. Thank god I got this beforehand. From here I fly back to the castle and head into the docks. Here we will find the one and only shield I'll be using for the rest of the run. And we made it. Now... Next issue is lighting this bad boy. Now, how can I do this uh, without using any of my shit? Well, uh, it's pretty simple actually. We just grab one of these wooden things, take it here, get it to light on fire, put it on there, and boom! Chest! And that earns us our shield! The Hylian Shield! Perfect. Now, you may be thinking, RJ, that's all well and good. You got the shield, but how are you going to possibly deal damage with the thing? Well, I guess you'll have to wait and see. So to reduce the time it was going to take and the risk I could incur, I did three things. Firstly, go and hunt down all of the Phantom Armor sets, which took a little bit of time, but every piece of the armor was pretty accessible. I did use a little bit of durability on the shield, using a rocket to fly up into this hole for the headpiece. And with the full set, I get an attack bonus to increase my overall damage and some pretty decent damage resist with eight protection on each piece. But what was the second thing I needed? Food. Yep which meant I went to hunt down some hardy truffles and a crab. Little did I know, this would be somewhat pointless, but nonetheless. And thirdly, a dragon's horn. Initially, I wanted Nadra's horn, but found Farosh's horn along the way. Now to you keen-eyed viewers out there, you might have noticed our way of dealing damage. That's correct. Now, although the Hylian shield can't do any damage by itself, what we can do is fuse items to it. So if we get something with a high attack power and fuse it to our shield, we'll be able to do a lot of damage with just simply parrying. Now the reason I wanted Nadra's horn was so that on top of dealing damage we could also freeze enemies. It is time to pick up some more shields. So we pick up the pot lid now, but we will not be using it. As long as this durability never goes down, we are not using anything but this single shield. Heading back to the lookout landing, it was time to do some glitches to make all of this possible. Now to be completely honest, I was making all of this up as I went. I had no clue how I was going to do any of this, but I did know about the item dupe from the end of my 300 days playthrough, which if you haven't seen, you should probably go and check out. 
Basically, all we do is fly close to the ground, hold the item we want to dupe, and then sort and close menu at the same time, dropping the items but keeping them in our inventory. Allowing me to whip up a bunch of amazing food which give me damage resist and extra hearts. The second trick, however, is a little bit more difficult. Alright, so you may be wondering, okay RJ, uh, you have the shield with your weapon attack, it does frost damage, great. You also have your attack up on your armor, which is also great, but how the heck are you possibly going to beat all four bosses, the monster wave you got to beat before you even get to those bosses, and Ganondorf not just once, but twice technically? Well, good sir. The answer is... The Zuggle Glitch. But how does Zuggle work? So first things first, we gotta align ourselves with the wall. Just make sure your back's against the wall if you wanna do this at home. This works with not just shields, but with bows and with swords as well. So if you want, you can do this and uh, basically have a super, super powerful sword or weapon or whatever you wanna do. But for my instance, I'm gonna be using a shield since this is a single shield only run. And all you have to do is basically have your shield, have the map, go on the map room. So as soon as you close the map room, you want to open your shield like this. Now, as you click drop, you then want to instantly press the shield again to pull up the shield inventory and switch to the other shield that you have in your inventory. So we're going to go drop like this, switch to the pot lid. Now the map is going to open by itself. Now we're going to go into our inventory. We're going to go over to our shields. I'm going to drop the other shield. Now this isn't actually going to drop it, as you can see. We still have both shields in our inventory and we have the pot lid currently equipped, apparently. On our back, however, we have both equipped. Huh. So what we can do now is have two Highland shields. Cool. But what does that do for us? Well, it effectively doubles our damage output. So it means now we're hitting with two Ferocious Highland Shields instead of just one. So now that we've got the attack damage of both on, we can take this a step further by not just doing this glitch once, by doing it 10 times. Now, if you do it any more than 10, things start to get a little weird uh, in terms of the game starting to break and uh, things detaching from bodies and body parts not connecting to themselves anymore so we don't necessarily want to do that little did i know back then i was actually going to need the ability to detach my body parts and destroy reality so off i went to hyrule castle overwhelmed with confidence how foolish i was diving down into the pit we run past all the enemies including the lionel making it to the first piece of this gigantic boss gauntlet puzzle the battle with the demon king's army it was here I realized two things. Firstly, those extra hearts I got from the truffles meant nothing, as getting hit by gloom instantly removes all of them, and that my Zuggle glitch actually did nothing to increase the damage of my shield. So even though I could parry with my shield, we were doing barely any damage, even with our attack bonus. So I gave it a few goes, but I was unable to even beat the first round of Bacoblins. So back to the drawing board we went. Now although we couldn't do a bunch of damage to these enemies, what we did figure out is that if we freeze them, we could actually push them off the edge and insta-kill them. Nadra's Horn could do this, but not efficiently. So instead, I decided to go and find a Frost Emitter. Along the way, I also picked up a Safety Fairy, and with the knowledge that the Zuggle didn't increase our shield damage, I needed to find the strongest fuse material for taking out the bosses, as we can't push them off. But it just so happens we walked right past it, the Lionel. Now this took a very long time, because as you can see, we are doing literally no damage to this thing. So the best thing I can do is just keep on spamming and parrying. Okay. First part of this done. We got what we need, which is the white main Lionel Saberhorn. And now, with everything we needed for an attempt, I headed back down to fight the Demon King's army once more. I systematically froze enemies and pushed them off to their deaths. Is that everything? That's everything. And for the first time, we've made it to the boss gauntlet. Thankfully, Colgera was Mother. pretty easy since all we had to do was slam through its back.
Uh, I said, thankfully, Kogera was easy since all we had to do was slam through its back. Awesome. But the Marble Gomer, on the other hand, was a different story. I fused my Lionel Macehorn to my shield and pondered on how I could even possibly get up to attack the eyeball. Turns out I can just ascend through its body, and after slowly, painstakingly parrying its eyeball, we take it out and realize that this was all for nothing, as against oh, the Mucked Rock, I had no way to hit it. Uh, I have absolutely no strategy for Mukturok at all. So yet again, back to the drawing board we went. Alright, we're going to need to take a different approach to this. I started by duplicating my fairies so that I couldn't die, and then went down to Tarrytown. But why? Just to hear that banger music? Well, kinda, but it was actually so I could pick up a particular Zonai device. Now, you know how before I mentioned that there was a secondary effect to the Zuggle, where it sort of breaks the game? Well, now it was time to put it to use. So like I said previously, when you Zuggle too many items, some interesting things can start to happen. Like this. What? This. What the shit is happening? And even this. The most important of these glitches being the final one. Placing the control stick on the ground while having over 20 items zoggled allows Link to phase through the floor. This lets me completely bypass the wall preventing us from reaching the Demon King. However, unfortunately for us, the boss trigger doesn't activate until we've defeated the Demon King's army. Uh. Wait. The Demon King's army? Not the four other bosses? So now all I had to do was beat the army maintaining the Zuggle, pull out a control rod somewhere above the door and phase down into the boss room. So I took my 20 Zuggled Hylian shields with frost emitters attached and pushed all the enemies off as Kolgera spawned my in. My new strategy involves not fighting Kolgera at all. Oh yeah, here, here, here should work. Alright, we made it through. <laughs> now, Kogera's out there, and we're running through this area. Inside the room, I defused my emitter and fused the Lionel part as I made my way to Ganondorf. We made it to Ganondorf with only a shield. So far, at least. Oh, I thought it was quite impressive. I don't know. I don't have the Master Sword yet, so I'm not gonna pull that shit out. Now, Ganondorf deals a lot of damage, and even though it's almost impossible for us to die with the amount of fairies we have, our shield could break with the amount of damage he is able to deal. So it's super important not to waste durability and parry as many attacks as we possibly can. Keep hitting him like this. We're dealing damage, but it's not like great damage. He doesn't expect the parries. Take this! Okay, Matt Mercer, chill out. Now, the most effective way to deal damage with the shield is to get in close and parry attack him. We can flip into him and deal damage, but it doesn't do even close to as much damage. So, after slowly whittling away, getting in close, parry attacking, parry attacking, parry attacking, we finally knock him down. Alright. But it's not over. Now we have to beat him again. Or we have to beat Kolgera. <laughs> yeah, Kolgera's name overlaps it. Oh, shit. Wait, he be doing that? It, I can see damage. But it's not dealing damage on the health bar because it says Kolgera. I, I don't know what to do about that. But if I can keep hitting him and I can see his actual health bar there going down, that, that I think is all that matters. Even though we are getting surrounded like that one... Uh, picture of the white girl surrounded by 20 black men. That's what I feel like right now. So the plan remained the same. Get in close and parry away. Oh, it, the problem with this guy is literally his mates. Oh. 
Hang on. We got him to half. Okay. We got him to half. This is good. We're gonna do it with just a shield, boys. With one single shield. Oh, he's reabsorbing him back in, I guess. Okay. Okay, he's going sicko mode. Fair enough. Fair enough. If we get him trapped in this corner, we can do, like, infinite damage. We can hit him multiple times. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Everything is progressing exactly as I intended it to. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh! Okay, now we just have to take out... Dragon Ganon. Sheesh. Zelda Dragon's coming. <gasps> Wait, this is a different cutscene. Because it has the Master Sword in its head, I just saw. Yo, wait, what? That's insane. Do I have to pick up the Master Sword? Like, bruh, my Master Sword's in this dragon's head? What the hell? Now all that was left to do was to jump from the Light Dragon and glide over to the Demon Dragon, where we come face to face with the Demon Eyeball Pus Sack where I yet again get out my shield and get to smacking. Dealing damage very, very slowly. We did this four times and eventually made our way to the demon dragon's head. The blood moon, the dragon swirling around. Oh, there's nothing better. I'm coming for you, Ganondorf. I ain't using my master sword on this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Take my white Lionel main shield, baby! We're slowly inching up it. And we are going to take it out! Yo. We just beat this game with a single Hylian shield. No weapons, no bows, just the Hylian shield. Link, you better not pull out that Master Sword. Oh my god, you- Link, no, we have to- Link, put it away! Link, put it away! Well, you need to use the shield! That's gonna make me do it. Well, uh... Run failed, I guess. Damn. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you slap like on it. This was really fun to record. I had a blast playing through this game a second time. If you haven't already, check out a previous video. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys on that next one. Peace out.